news flow aside, I want to focus on a bit of a trend that's emerged in the Kenyan markets of, uh, of late and explore uh, this theme a bit. We've recently come across an array of articles about Kenyans getting property buying fever in a big way, where it's been foreign mm. money in particular boosting investment into that sector. Just how much of a hype is there around this space right now? Well, I, I think there's a lot of noise, but it's just popping above the radar, and it's the same story. I mean, I was in Kinshasa this year, I was in Juba, uh, Ju Juba this year. Uh, the sub-Saharan African uh, uh, real estate market is in a, the sweetest of sweet spots, and Kenya is no exception. There's some mega trends going on. You know, our population is going to double. There's this awesome move towards urbanization, a structural shortage. Of, of housing and you know for example in Kenya alone we just have 20,000 outstanding mortgages I mean to me it seems that we've had this amazing run and it's got a lot more legs I think and Kenya is no exception to what the tape is playing out all across the continent. Of course, uh, the usual benefactors are the cement players, and we've already put them mm. in the spotlight, but uh, not only good for them. We've got a player like Housing yeah. Finance to consider and should be Absolutely. reaping some rewards too, especially after having just bulked up its lending ability. Well, I think Housing Finance, um, it's at a 27-month high. The, the, the shareholders and buyers are, have pushed it much higher since the announcement that their bond was oversubscribed. Um, they're able to now scale up the business and they're aggressively going after this market, which I think is, is a blue sky opportunity. I think KCB is also a similar story. They've got a good mortgage franchise. They've, uh, you know, they've taken in the subsidiary. But I think investors will continue to react positively to those banks or institutions that go after this mortgage yeah. market. Because I think on a loan-to-value basis, it's a sweet spot. Prices are going to go higher. And I think interest rates are getting more and more affordable. So I think it's a, it's a good spot. And investors will continue to push as higher of those institutions playing in this space. Having said that, though, I mean, are there any risks that you're keeping back of mind at this stage uh, associated mm. with housing finance? Because front of mind for me and uh, possibly triggering alarm bells uh, globally is, you know, a, the ability of a finance institution to manage a growing loan book in the current environment. Well, I, I think for, you know, it's mortgage financing, the way that it's going to be done in Kenya is hardly rocket science. We're really at the... Uh, we're, at, we're at the start of the innovation curve. We're just talking about plain vanilla mortgages, um, good, good uh, LTV ratios. There is hardly any complexity around our mortgage market. It's literally a question of pushing mortgages out. The risk to the banks remains that you know, if we have another flare-up like we had in 2007-2008, the economy slows down, and then you know, and these market, these assets then become very, very sticky, and they sit on the bank's books. But ultimately, I think this is really as sure a bet as it gets. And these institutions like Housing Finance and KCB mm -hmm. are taking excellent risk-adjusted trades on. Let's look at uh, bring KCB into this discussion at this mm. point. I mean, what kind of competitive landscape are we looking at? Because KCB is also becoming more and more aggressive via its mortgage business as well. Well, I think, you know, it's getting more and more competitive. But the advantage that KCB has is this wonderful footprint they've got across the region with more than 210 branches across uh, the East African community. And also, typically, they have a reasonably low cost of funds because they're able to access the governments and institutions of that sort. So I think you know, they've, they've liquefied the balance sheet through the rights issue, which was necessary. They were behind the capital curve. They've leapfrogged the capital curve via that rights issue. And it seems to me that they are well positioned with a lot of liquidity at exactly the right time that they need it. So I look at it quite bullishly. I think it's an outlier. It trades much cheaper than the other big five banking stocks in Kenya. And I think it's an unfair haircut. And I think it was largely driven by the perception there was a de deluge of supply coming by that rights issue. But someone's mopped everything up below 23 and done a good job of it. Yeah, of course, Ali Khan, lots of argument mm. that's providing, you know, solid enough basis for the bullish sentiment that you're sharing with us. But mm. there are Kenyans worried that a bubble might be forming. I mean, despite most analysts saying that there's uh, plenty of room for upward momentum here, to what extent are we looking at a possible bust situation where we've got feverish rises in both houses and land prices as well? 
Well, I, I, I just see a zero probability of, of a price crash in the real estate market. And I think uh, really the, the African real estate story is going to be one of the biggest stories once people get their data. You know, it's, there's a perception gap. People don't have the data. If you look at the data, it's been an extraordinary rise. If you look at the demographics, if you look at the whole big, the mega trends, I think it's unlikely that that's going to happen. The risks are that Africa slips backwards. We get into situations, you know, the likes of which you have in the Eastern Congo. But I think, you know, the trend is one way. The government, governance and corruption index is oversold. We're on the bounce here and we've got this enormously young population for whom the reality is entirely different to, to the reality it was for a lot of their leaders. And I think we've got to deal with that. Well, with that being the case and that being the mega trend and, mm. and a very interesting development that's propping up on the, uh, on the scenes, we've seen Has Consult uh, developing 800 houses on uh, 150 acres that was once a coffee estate. And I mean, I'm yes. going to read a quote here where, uh, you know, some are saying yes, we can't, we can't be romantic about it by saying that they shouldn't be turning coffee farms into real estate. But unless coffee becomes more profitable, it will continue. What are you making of that trend and the fact that we're giving well, up coffee real estate? estate for property development well I wish I wish some of these coffee companies would pay attention to that lady from Has Consult because they're sitting in a bubble and they're really not paying they're not aligned with shareholder value extraction which is exactly what I've been talking I think about with uh, regarding these companies you know there is no reason why a company a, whether it's a coffee estate or a tea company does not look to unlock value for its shareholders so I think you're seeing that happen what, what your comment is referring to is a big trend, and EGADS is a classic example, and I expect it to actually gain further traction. In the long run, this is a trend worldwide. We're gobbling up agricultural land. We're industrializing at a very fast pace. And ultimately, I think that's why you've got cotton prices at 18, 70-year highs. You've got coffee prices at multi-year highs. You've got everything taking off. And this, this comment you're referring to is just a global trend, which has now finally landed mm -hmm. in Kenya. With that being the case, I mean, what's your view on agriculture? Because uh, this would pose a significant risk to production on those fronts moving forward. Well, I, I, I think, you know, you, you, it, it's a reality of life. I mean, if there's more value to be made for these agricultural companies to go and develop their land, then that's what they should be, be doing because it's, it's practically criminally negligent not to be doing that. I mean, the, the whole idea of management is to extract value for its shareholders. That's what they've got to do. In the long run, you can't fight that trend. And I think this is, this is also an interesting development that we've got this huge land grab going, in, going on in Africa. At the same time, we've got these old companies which are going to flip into real estate because it makes more sense.